If you've been previously confused by some of Adobe Audition's powerful audio editing tools, you'll love this update that makes a lot of that much simpler for audio editing. Hi, I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the AudacityPodcast.com. I'm here at NAB Show 2016 with Duran from Adobe. Duran is the product manager for Adobe Audition. And Duran, tell me about what's coming new in a uh, yet-to-be-released version of Adobe Audition. Right, what we're calling a reveal uh, will be out later this, this, this year. Um, and the, the big feature that I'm really excited about so that we're really showing off and has been having great uh, feedback has been our what we're calling the Essential Sound Panel. And if you're familiar with the Lumetri Color Panel in Premiere Pro, which simplified color grading to, uh, for, for more novice users, uh, we've, we've kind of taken that same approach with this panel for mixing audio uh, for any kind of production, whether it's a video, whether it's a podcast, whether it's an audio book. Um, and we really focus on the dialogue, music, effects workflow that's pr pretty common in post-production. And it's really, it's really pretty simple. You can come in here, select one or more clips, and assign them a, a, a mix type or a role. And in this case, my top, uh, top track is all voiceover, so I'm gonna assign them as dialogue, uh, a dialogue type. And this gives me several different uh, options that are and parameters that are applicable to mixing dialogue. So I can come in here and I can just quickly make sure that all those selected clips are of the same average loudness. Uh, a good place to start, and then I can start doing the rest of the mix on top of that. Uh, so I might come in uh, and do some reparations, some sounds and, and some restoration. So I can, I can reduce noise, rumble, um, but in, instead of having a very complicated effect for these novices with a ton of parameters uh, and potentially some very confusing uh, ways to get very mixed up and, and, and lost, it's really just a, a slider. I can grab this, I'm reducing more, no more noise, I'm reducing noise a little bit less. Uh, I'm doing the same thing. I can do this in real time while I'm listening to it so I can, I can hear the changes, dial it in until I get that that right setting uh, and that right, right effect, that right balance between noise reduction uh, and before I start getting into weird artifacts and, and losing some of that information. And uh, once I'm done with that, I can get in here and I can, I can play with the clarity. So one example is uh, dynamics processing or compression, uh, which is uh, people tend to know, oh, I need to compress my vocals, I need to compress my dialogue, uh, but they don't always know what compression is, how it works, uh, and what sounds good. Uh, so we, we basically have a simple checkbox and a slider, you know, less, less dynamics, more dynamics. But what's happening under the hood is it's not just this simple dumb slider, we're actually using our native DSP and our native effects so that uh, when, I, when I enable the dynamics for a clip as an example, we'll analyze each clip uh, individually and find the proper uh, threshold values for the compressor, assign those to each instance of the compressor on each of these clips, and then we interpolate different value ranges for those. Oh, so wow. as we're going back and forth, each clip is treated uniquely and separately, but you'll get that consistent sound, you'll get that, com that consistent compression and expansion uh, on, your, on your dialogue clips. I love this approach to it because it's this magical make dragon button that just <laughs> instantly makes everything beautiful, but you're not then constrained to use the, you, if you Absolutely know not. how you want to tweak things, you can get in here and tweak it with the regular standard tools. Or, or if a novice starts with a mix and it gets passed along to an audio professional, they can close this panel and just work with the native effects as if they built the session themselves. Um, it's, it's, it's really simple. And what's, what's nicer for, for uh, teams or organizations or even individual projects is uh, all of these, these uh, value ranges and, and settings can be customized. So uh, if, a, if, a, if a, a team or a station or a project has a signature sound, uh, a, a professional audio pro or an expert can come in, customize it, basically flip around the panel and look at the back here and set some of these, these minimum and maximum values and then share these out with their team uh, as a, either a master template or a preset. So organizations that have a very signature sound, NPR sound was kind of uh, something that was popular kind of going around the news last year. Um, and they start with an $8,000 microphone, which makes all of us sound better to begin with. But they have very specific EQ roll off, they have very specific compressor settings, such that all of their artists and all of their talent and all their journalists have that signature sound. Uh, that can be customized in here. Uh, it can be built uh, for, for projects. It can be, presets can be created for individual talent or individual actors in a, in a, or, 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 
or presenters in a project such that it's really as easy as saying, oh, this is this is Daniel, this is Duran, I'm gonna sign this preset to him, sign this preset to me, and just then go from there. Uh, we, uh, that uh, the unify loudness, that, that target loudness, while we default to uh, ITU standards, negative 23 lefts for broadcast, you could certainly come in here, set that target to negative 16 for podcasting, and, and never think about it again. That's wonderful. I, I love the feature that this is building in. Gives a lot of control, a lot of flexibility, and makes it easier for you to do these things that we often talk about, like compression, which is an art all on its own. Here, you don't have to be an artist to move a slider back and forth. You just have to do it to the point that it sounds good. So this is in, uh, tell me about like multi-track, single track, clips, is it this, track effect, clip effect? This is a multi-track experience uh, only right now. So it's really focused on, our, our focus was really on that mixing experience. Uh, either either people who are bringing project, video projects in from Premiere Pro to mix the audio, add, add some ADR that, and that kind of thing, or for uh, folks who are working in multi-track uh, recording themselves, recording multiple participants, say in a, a group podcast um, or, or commercial audio, uh, and then being able to just quickly mix it uh, in, in conjunction with our other feature, which is exporting it right out to Media Encoder, uh, so for, for export uh, to full, multiple different formats. Uh, this, was, this was our goal with this release. Wonderful. So this, when is this coming out? Uh, I can't give you a specific date yet. I'm not at liberty to do that, but we're saying early summer right now. Okay, great. So it might even be out by the time you're watching this video or it's coming out soon in 2016. Duran, thank you very much for showing. And if you want more information about this or want to sign up for Adobe Creative Cloud, then look at the video links below this video. And I'm Daniel J. Lewis from theaudacitypodcast.com. Thanks for watching.